All right. I hope you enjoyed that intro as much as I enjoyed making it. It honestly, that was a lot of fun. So I've seen this challenge sort of before. So I've seen the challenge where people use like all, using all my markers in one drawing or one illustration or like I just did one using all my brown art supplies last week. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it down below and you can check that out. But I thought it would just be fun to do a drawing with 120 markers and I picked that number because that's the largest number of Ohu'u markers I can get in a set. So that's how I got 120. And since I have this 120 Ohu marker set, it made sense to use that. So I already made this illustration. I worked on it before the video because it took a lot of time and I don't want to take up your entire day just showing you, you know, me sketching out this drawing. So I just copied it, scanned it, so if I messed up the first attempt at this, then I could, you know, have a backup and I'm Glad I made that because I definitely messed up my first attempt at this and not just because my camera decided to die in the middle of me filming. And it dies in this too, but you can't tell because I saw when it died, so I stopped working and then charged the battery. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit more about the art because I've rambled on about stuff that probably doesn't matter for a while. So my whole plan to making sure I got all 120 markers in this set. First, I have the Ohu'u bag of markers just sort of off in the upper right-hand corner. You can kind of see it on the screen. And once I had used a marker, it goes over to the left-hand side off of the screen, and I just had a box to put all the markers in because, well, I didn't really want them rolling off my desk. So my plan to start this drawing out was to just get all of the colors that were similar enough, like, each color from each of the... Wow, what am I trying to say? I tried to grab all of the colors that were the same, and I used all of those at once. So in the beginning, I just grabbed out all of the browns and a couple of the grays, the warm grays specifically. I just knew that there were certain colors that I wanted in different places, and brown seemed like one of the easiest colors to start with, so I would make sure it got to everything that I wanted it to. So that was sort of my plan for this whole illustration. Next, I picked out my pinks and reds and went with those to just go over things because really these were the two color sort of families that I knew where I wanted to put them the most. And I figured if I can put the colors down that I know where I want them, it'll make the colors that I don't know where I want them easier. Or at least that's what I thought. <laughs> so... Once uh, things move on to into the like dark greens and some of the blues and purples, it gets a little bit, a lot, a bit harder for me to figure out where to put everything. But it works out in the end. It's, it's a, a struggle, though. Um, I honestly liked using this technique of just picking out the color families and really focusing on those colors for each sort of section that I did in this piece. So if you want to try out this challenge or something similar, this might be a technique or strategy that could work for you. Um, I also noticed while I was working on this piece that although there are 120 markers in this set, and that is a lot of alcohol-based markers, um, who doesn't really offer a lot of oranges? So yeah, that was something interesting to note. There's a lot of yellow, but not many oranges. So, you know, who if you're planning on making some more colors, some... Orangey or peachier tones would be kind of nice. I don't even know if they'd watch this video or not, but, you know, who knows? So I tried to make sure that when I was using each color family, I wanted to get as many of the shadows in that I could while still in that color family. And if there were a few colors that were in that color family, how many times can I say that, man? If there were colors that I didn't use while I was using that main color... I just put them all up towards like the upper part of the screen and they're at the top of my desk, but you can't really see that on camera. So if there were colors I was really stumped on and where to put them, I tried not to focus on it for too long and I just scooted them to the top of my desk and thought, yep, I will get back to you later. And I did. So that seemed to work for me and it just helped me from getting frustrated about not knowing where to put all the colors. And as you may have seen earlier, Yes, I did show the box a bit on the video to show where I'm putting all the markers into. And I think it's right about... It's around here. Yeah. 
it's around here where I take all of the markers out of the bag, all the ones that were left, because really the bag started to fall over once more and more markers were taken out of it. So I just took out all of the different markers and tried to separate them into their respective color families. And I kept going with the same process. I just had all the markers out on my desk instead of in the bag because I don't want to keep dealing with the bag falling over and not being able to find the markers that I needed. So I'm now moved on to most of the blue colors. And this was where things started to get kind of, kind of into a struggle. I knew that cotton candy thing I was going to make blue because, well... It made sense to me that it could be a blue color, and it also adds that contrast to the other colors that are around it, but yeah, I was trying to just use the blues and purples as contrast pieces, because there's a lot of brown and pink in this, and I wanted to make sure everything was separated. I know there are lines to separate the different objects, but I just like contrast in my work, and I think the shadows also help pull out some more contrast. And you know, things are pretty brightly colored because it's candy and it's also a cartoon. So I think the bright colors work for this. I honestly don't know how anyone would do a realism piece with 120 markers, especially with these colors because they're really bright. I'm sure if there's anyone out there talented enough to do it, it's definitely Super Ray Dizzle because she's amazing at realism. She, If you don't know her, I will link her channel down below. Check out her videos. I don't do a lot of realism. But she does a ton of realism, and she also likes to focus on using affordable art supplies. And I don't mean like, oh, it's affordable because it's only $30 instead of $400. Nah, girl uses like dollar store art supplies. She also uses nice ones too, like more expensive ones. But she's a very relatable artist to me because art supplies are not cheap. And I like that she shows you don't need to have expensive art supplies to create really awesome things. So yeah, if you want to check her out, or check out just how to do more realistic pieces. I will link her channel below. I'm pretty sure she used using all of my markers in one piece video. I'll also link that video down below if I can find it. It's been a while since I've watched that, but that sounds like a video I've seen of hers. So yeah, if I can find it, I will link that below. So now that I've uh, promoted another artist for <laughs> I don't know how long on this video. Um, yeah, here's back to the art. I tried to separate all of the blue colors out. And now I'm just kind of riding the struggle bus of figuring out where to put all these gray colors. And I also had some fluorescent colors that gave me that little extra challenge of figuring out where the heck do I put these weird colors? And I really just used them for the base of the cotton candy and for the soda because it just made sense to me. It works. It was fine. It, it functioned. But yeah, I'm just about done with this piece. And honestly, I really like how it turned out. It's just sort of like this goofy picture and it was a really fun challenge to do. So if you guys are interested in attempting this challenge yourself, I will have this line art posted in a link down below that is found on my website. So it'll just be for a free download. So you can download it, color it. Don't sell it. If you do, then I have to like go through all this legal stuff and so much paperwork and I don't wanna. But yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this 120 marker prompt where we made, well, where I made this interesting illustration piece. So yeah, thanks so much for watching my video, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Check out all the links in the description below for all of the things mentioned in the video and where to find these markers if you're interested in purchasing them. And have an awesome day, guys. Bye. Do you want to see more shenanigans? Then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Oh, you want to see more shenanigans like right now? Then check out these suggestions on your screen or head on over to my Instagram. Thanks so much for watching guys. Check back soon for some more shenanigans. Bye!